Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. What I got for you today is a review of the brand new SEMA X8C. I just got this in yesterday. Um, last night I did a, a quick uh, run, well, a low power run of its brushed motors just to make sure it would be uh, ready for today. Uh, what we got here is it's a large quadcopter. It apparently looks to be a clone of, uh, say, a DJI Phantom but with all the bells and whistles, without the brushed motors, and without the uh, camera mounts, um, what you got is just a basic quadcopter, a manually controlled quadcopter. There's no GPS in this. Um, you have to manually control it through the controller that comes with it. Um, one thing though that I notice about this quadcopter, just by holding it, it is a hefty quadcopter uh, compared to uh, other uh, beginner range quadcopters. Actually, I'm not, I'm uh, recommending this as a beginner, beginner's quadcopter. I'll go into that a little later. But as to other uh, low-cost uh, quadcopters, this one is, weighs in at about uh, close to 600 grams with the battery in, installed. Uh, that's about a one and a third pound. Um, compare that to its nearest competitor, the Tarantula X6. You know, the Tarantula X6 is similar size in diameter, but look at it. You know, this, this is much heftier. There's a lot more uh, plastic on it. <laughs> this quadcopter it has a much bigger battery too uh, than the tarantula um, and because of that it weighs twice as much as the tarantula this tarantula is only about six tenths of a pound and this is one and a third pound um, both of these can get about close to over 11 minutes of flight time um, that's what's reported but uh, what i want to do today is just demonstrate its flight ability also demonstrate its camera we also want to see if it has uh, any range issues I'm going to try to take it out to its advertised range of hundred meters and also I brought along a SEMA X5C controller that I had modified if we do encounter any range issues <laughs> we'll see that uh, supposedly it can bind to the X5C-1 uh, transmitter but this is its transmitter here um, with this transmitter uh, it does have a headless mode uh, that's the uh, one major feature that this quadcopter has over, say, the original X5C. This has headless mode. Um, you activate it by pressing down and holding the uh, low and high switch up here in the upper left trigger button. Um, it also has a 2 megapixel camera. Here's the camera. It has an unusual connector for the camera. It looks like an audio jack. But uh, with that 2 megapixel camera, I noticed it's a little bit wiggly and it's holding it, it can be tilted up and down which is great but I threw a little foam in there to, to stiffen it up so it's not quite as wiggly as it is uh, without the foam but um, well, let's talk about this real quickly about the uh, weight of this quadcopter and its size because of that one and a third pound weight this thing has bigger motors that, than you normally see in the beginner level quadcopters uh, in the toy grade quadcopters um, with that these propellers have a lot to lift and they're they're going to be turning they're very large propellers they're even larger than the uh, tarantulas propellers if you can see there but being such and turning at high rates of speed to lift this thing these can be a bit dangerous with that one and a third pound weight this quadcopter can be a bit dangerous if it, if it fell from the sky onto somebody with that in mind um, I really don't recommend this quadcopter for brand new flyers. Brand new flyers, uh, you should start out with something a little more safer than this. This can create some safety issues, especially if you're flying around people, pets, dogs, your children. You don't just want to do that. You want to keep this away from people. Um, you want to fly this out in areas away from people. You do that, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Um, additionally, uh, as a beginner flyer, all beginners, have to go through a lot of crashes. It's just inevitable. Uh, although this is built very tough, it looks tough, it's not going to be able to take, uh, say, uh, crashes at high speed or from high altitude into the ground. It's, it's probably going to break because it's just too hefty. It, it's going to build up a lot of momentum and break. You want something lighter, um, safer to learn to fly with for you brand new flyers. For those of you that already have a quadcopter and have figured out how to hover, yeah, this, this, you can go into this. But for those of you who have never touched the controls of a quadcopter, I wouldn't recommend this. Go with something smaller, cheaper, lighter, safer. Okay, let's go out into the field and give this uh, quadcopter a test flight. 
Now notice I'm not taking this off from within the pits like I normally do. <laughs> I want to go out in the open field a bit for safety's sake. Okay, we, we, as this has headless mode, it is, hopefully it will remember the initial heading that I point the quadcopter on before I uh, we bind the quadcopter to the transmitter. And then with that in mind, if I enter headless mode, all movement forward and back, right and left on the pitch roll stick will be in relation to that initial bearing. Uh, the yaw command has no effect on uh, the direction the quadcopter flies when it's in headless mode. Now, I have the battery inserted. All I got to do is turn the on-off switch on this quadcopter. And we'll point it down toward the pylon. That'll be our base heading for headless mode. And I'm going to turn on the video throughout this flight, but first we need to bind the quadcopter to the transmitter. And I'm leaving it in, in low right now. There's, there's no wind at all today. And turning on the video camera. This will be its first flight, folks. Here we go. Now notice, it's blowing things off on the ground below it. There's a lot of power coming off of this quadcopter. Let's go up high now, or go for a flight around the uh, field. Actually, I'm letting go of the pitch roll stick and I'm just entering hover while it climbs. And doing a rotate too while it's climbing. And a slow climb. And obviously there's a wind right there. And that's what its camera looks like, folks. I should have the camera on right now. I did turn it on before we took off. Continuing the slow rotate. Okay, I'm about 100 meters based on the size of this thing, so I'm not going too far. Forward pitch. It seemed to enter a little bit of vortex ring state there. So keep that in mind, this heavy quadcopter can't enter vortex ring state. you got to get some forward pitch to get out of that. And I'm in full forward pitch right now. Going to high. Going downwind. At high. Going upwind. A little breeze coming in from my back. bring it down a little lower and do a, a pass at full forward pitch this is full forward pitch it should be going faster than that coming downwind going back into the wind again That's full forward pitch. What the hell? There's hardly any wind at all there, but it's going into it. Okay, now this isn't meant for uh, acrobatic flying. This big quadcopter is meant for a camera. It's a camera bird. And I'm getting good range on it, about 100 meters. more. Maybe even more range folks. It seems to be flying real well there. Let's do a descent. 
banking left turn into descent. And let's bring it back into view again. Bring it up close so you can see it again. Well, it's a nice smooth flyer. Going back to beginner. Let's try that headless mode. What do you think, folks? Headless mode? Let's take it down to the end of the field there. And give it a little altitude, too. Okay, entering headless mode. That's the wind pushing it back. Left. Rotating as I'm pushing left. So it does remember the initial heading. Rotating. Pushing left. So you could pot. Let's see if it remembers the initial heading. Let's come out of headless mode. One good thing, when you enter headless mode, it doesn't, it beeps a few times to let you know that you've entered headless mode, but it doesn't continue that beeping uh, annoyingly throughout the flight. Let's go to the forward left quadrant from the headless mode. Activating headless mode. Oh, there's a wind there pushing that. Maybe, not. let's bring this in for a second. I want to try something. We are going to do a uh, calibration of level. Landing the quadcopter. Okay, this is a relatively flat level surface. What I'm going to do to calibrate this quadcopter is pull down on both sticks and move them to the right and hold them there for a few seconds those lights should be blinking on the quadcopter and that calibrates the quadcopter's level surface understanding of level I'm turning off the video camera and then turn or let it uh, record to the uh, card and then turning the camera back on again and here we go for another flight with uh, recalibrated uh, uh, gyros That's the wind pushing it away from me as it's climbing. <laughs> so again, this this would be a great camera bird. It apparently, is still in headless mode. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Now again. Um, for you beginners, this has all same color blades, so you're going to have a hard time learning orientation with this quadcopter right away. Uh, so again, that's another reason why I don't recommend this for beginner flyers. Because of the color, same color uh, setup, uh, you'll easily get, uh, you'll lose your orientation very easily with this quadcopter if you're a beginner flyer. You need to learn uh, the basics of... Uh, orientation techniques and that's using movement of the quadcopter to learn which direction it's pointed say so if it's moving left all I got to do is turn left to bring it back toward me like that it's moving let's go off in the distance and demonstrate that real quick okay um, I lost orientation I'm turning the road turning the quadcopter in the sky if I push forward on this uh, pitch roll stick I notice it's moving to the left so all I got to do to bring it back to me is turn left on the uh, control stick. And here it comes right back to me. Well, my comments on the uh, flight ability of this thing, it's nice smooth flyer, very smooth flyer. And again, that's intended for, this is a camera bird. This is mainly a camera bird. And that's why it's a smooth flyer. <laughs> it's not really acrobatic it's not meant to be I'm not even gonna it has flips feature I'm not going to even try it I don't want to hurt the motors on this I want this thing to last a good long time um, 
cameras it can carry yeah i think this can carry a gopro for those of you who always ask that question can it carry a gopro i think this one can easily carry a gopro it's it's got more more than enough power to lift a gopro camera Um, you could probably mount it to the camera itself if this camera isn't sufficient. I've seen somebody take out the guts of this camera and uh, they replaced, they just left the bottom mount, camera mount, and used that as the base mount for their uh, Mobius camera that they hooked onto this. Okay, I'm not going to take this until the battery dies. I'm going to bring this in now. This was just the first flight, just to see what it could do. Let's bring it in. My first review of the X8C. Um, I'm going to do uh, comparison reviews of this with the uh, with its main competitor, mainly the Tarantula. Right now, what I'm seeing with this quadcopter, I do like it. It flies very well. Nice and smooth. Nice smooth landings with it too. <laughs> So it is a good quadcopter. I'm turning off the transmitter so that I don't accidentally chop off my fingers while lifting this up. And then immediately turning off the quadcopter. So now it's safe. Again, great quadcopter. Damn it, I think I forgot to record the video. <laughs> but that's okay. Let's turn it on real quick just to see if... When you turn off the quadcopter without turning off its video... I don't think I'll be able to save that video. The second part of the video. That's fine. Turn it off the quadcopter. It's very important to turn off your video at, uh, before you turn off the quadcopter. Otherwise, the video from the camera will not record. But that's all right. I already had some video from the first part of the flight before I uh, uh, leveled the gyros. But Again, first impressions of this quadcopter, very good flyer, very nice and stable flyer. It's not acrobatic flyer. It's mainly intended to carry cameras. Um, it has a stock camera with it. Uh, this is the 2 megapixel version. Uh, but if I'm not uh, happy with this camera, I'm going to quickly replace it with a Mobius camera uh, for future flights. Again, it's very big, somewhat heavy. It can be dangerous. This is not for, intended for total brand new uh, newbie beginner flyers. Uh, I would not recommend this quadcopter for you. Start off with something safer, lighter, cheaper, like a FY326, $26 mid-range quadcopter. Uh, very easy to fly. Uh, very good uh, beginner step before you go into this. Okay, that's my first look at the C-Max 8C. This is Quadcopter 101, signing off.